Hi guys, it's a concerned Dr. Miskoff. It's about 9 p.m. April 6, 2020. I'm vlogging uh, from my kitchen here in, in Toms River, New Jersey. And uh, of course, the topic is COVID-19. I'd like to dedicate this vlog to one of my younger fans, Sydney. Hi, how you doing, Sydney? And I'd also like to thank New Jersey manufacturers for donating so many N95 masks to our hospital and our ICU. Uh, it was very helpful. Uh, tonight, I'd like to talk about a, a new kid on the block, or I should say an old kid on the block, Ivermectin, I-V-E-R-M-E-C-T-I-N. And uh, this data is coming out of Australia. Uh, there was a, uh, a dual institute, the Monash University and the Dougherty Institute uh, published a paper recently. And uh, it was published in antiviral research. And what they found is that at least in a test tube in vitro, um, a single dose of this medication could remove viral RNA uh, within 24 to 48 hours almost completely. Uh, the fact of the night is that this, this product uh, or molecule uh, was first isolated in the 1970s uh, and it was from a fermented broth of a bacteria called Streptomyces avermatilis. Uh, and then went on to be used as an anti-parasite or parasitic to, uh, for humans. And what it does is it basically paralyzes invertebrate uh, parasites. Um, that's the thought mechanism of action. And uh, kind of what it does is, if you can imagine the RNA of the virus, this is an RNA virus corona or SARS-CoV-2. And the RNA or DNA, but in this case RNA, is sort of wrapped around protein. And that protein um, of the virus is really there to damper uh, the host cell or the host response or immunity. So it's trying to fight off this virus and the virus has these proteins that are trying to take away the ability of the host cell to fight. And what uh, ivermectin is supposed to do is actually hurt that protein or inhibit that protein from that dampering effect. Um, uh, it reduced the viral colonies in, in, in the test tube again or in vitro uh, 5,000 times, and, and this was within 48 hours, so it was pretty impressive. And uh, it's been utilized in Australia for head lice and, and also other places um, as a topical cream or lotion. It can be given as a pill. I believe it can be made into an IV. And it's, again, been utilized for roundworms, pinworms, other parasites, uh, roundworms also known as nematodes, uh, scabies it's been used on. Rosacea, with rosacea, which is a uh, dermatologic condition causing skin redness of the face with these visible vessels. Um, the company that makes it is MSD, M like Mary, S like Sam, and D. They're known for donating over the last 30 years ivermectin to third world or developing countries for river blindness and elephantiasis. Uh, so kudos to them for, for doing that for these countries that can't afford the product. It is well tolerated at, at these doses uh, that it's been utilized for. We don't know what the appropriate dose would be in a human. It hasn't been studied in humans for, co um, for COVID-19 at least. Some of the side effects, uh, very rarely you can get a low blood pressure, but the more common would be GI. So nausea, uh, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, um, uh, some of those things you can get actually with COVID-19. You can get dizzy or drowsy. Um, but at low doses, again, it's usually well tolerated. As a pulmonologist, it, I saw it was reported it could, in some cases, worsen asthma symptoms, and it can interact with uh, Coumadin or Warfarin. So it was published in uh, antiviral research out of Australia recently. Uh, Monash University and Darty Institute uh, did, uh, did publish this study. Additionally, it's been found, at least in, in vitro, uh, to work against HIV and dengue fever and fever, uh, influenza, and even Zika. Uh, however, I believe in at least a clinical trial or two uh, in humans, it, it was not shown to at least uh, have positive outcomes. I don't think there was too much negative about it. Um, again, more research is going to be needed for this. What dose to use? It sort of uh, reminds me of the hydroxychloroquine story, um, something that's used for uh, malaria or as an anti-parasite as well. Um, uh, again, we don't know if hydroxychloroquine is, is definitely working at this point. It is being studied. We are utilizing uh, it in patients coming in uh, with uh, uh, pulse oximetry or oxygen saturations of 92% or less. That seems to be the trigger. Uh, you know, we're not advising to use it as an outpatient uh, medication for mild disease. Uh, it is unfortunately being used uh, prophylactically without really knowing 
exactly what the appropriate dose is. Uh, same with this, ivermectin, uh, not going to be recommending it for prophylaxis. It needs to be studied extensively or at least studied um, in humans for COVID-19. And if there's going to be a study with close contacts like we're start, uh, seeing popping up for hydroxychloroquine, uh, that would be helpful too to see if it's preventative. But again, we don't know the doses and we, we're still waiting for something to launch. Uh, we don't know the effect in um, pregnancy. Uh, so it wouldn't be recommended there. Uh, there are some anecdotal cases being reported uh, in humans, and so far it sounds uh, pretty positive. Uh, we don't know uh, in breast milk if it's safe. Um, so for now, we're just going to say, you know, wait the studies. And um, uh, it does sound promising that at least in a test tube, it can, it can knock out uh, the RNA of this virus within 48 hours, and in some cases, even 24 hours. So stay tuned. I guess this is a case where potentially having head lice may save your life if, in fact, uh, you're taking ivermectin and, um, well, not in the cream form, but uh, at least in some sort of systemic form. But it's too soon to tell. So stay tuned, and uh, we hope to hear more about this product as we get a little, uh, gain a little bit of experience. Thank you, and have a great night.